Welcome back to London Beautiful Life and we're at London Film Festival 2024 throughout central London at the Royal Festival Hall, BFI South Bank and View Leicester Square. <laughs> Hello, how are you? Hi, I'm very fine and you? Great, thank you. Are you excited to be at London Film Festival? Very exciting to be here because I love this city so much and uh, I'm very excited to be here. It's amazing. So tell me about this film. What attracted you to the, sh the script? Actually, uh, the script. The script. It's an amazing script. It's a, it's a movie who is talking about women and about freedom, about friendship and about liberty and about just like how we live today and this is wonderful to see that in like cinemas today, nowadays. So could you sum up, tell me about your character for those who want to go see it <laughs> as well? <I'm> <laughs> no problem. No, I, I play uh, Nicole, she's a writer and she she tried to write her first uh, novel, novel or like book. Yes, her first novel. So she's she's in contradiction, you know, because I have a, um, a sentence in Virginia Woolf's book that I love so much. Who is like, I want to be C, but I, I'm very afraid to be C. It's not English. I don't know if you understood like what, it, but it's like the contradiction about Nicole. You know, she 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 looks at her friend like Noemi who plays Elise and Suela Yacoub who plays Ruby who's amazing and she she yes she have a lot of things in her heart and in, in, in her head but she's afraid to show that in the world you know and it's a very female um, like point of B. <laughs> so what attracted you to this script? Um, when I first essentially read it it was very raw and authentic um, and I, ne I never seen so much, um, so many things talked about within London, like a normal day. And, and it's like all throughout London. It was just a, uh, something that intrigued me. It was like, uh, I want to, I want people to see how it actually feels to have a friendship group and it go throughout the whole day and it, and it not be something that has to be a uh, dramatic. There has to be like, it, it's got something to do with actually real authentic London. You know, we, we went around Primrose Hill. We ran around Westway. There were so many things that I recognized and, and I was like, I want to be a part of this. You know? Where is your favorite place in London? I, I would say it's Soho, you know. I'm always in Soho. They've got so many good uh, food places, but I also say it's, it's Ladbroke Grove as well. I love Ladbroke Grove. So it was nice that it was near that as well, near that spot in Ladbroke Grove because there's plenty of great culture there as well. So yeah, that's one of my favorite places, yeah. So if you could um, tell me more about your character and why you like this character so much. Well, Malcolm um, has to deal with a lot. He has to deal with the pressures of being at home um, and having a single mum. And I understood that and I could resonate with that because I've always um, been in that situation where my mum is a single mum and, and she obviously did her best to raise me. And um, But I always felt like I had to take that on in the household. I had to be the man of the house. So I resonated with Malcolm straight away because it was like he was trying to do the same thing by playing football and then... Um, when you see his journey throughout this film, uh, he kind of lets go of, of, of that burden of, of, of being such a, a, a man in the house. You know what I mean? He, he kind of lets that go when he sees his mom's reaction um, and, uh, to his football career and stuff like that. So um, it's definitely something I was like, oh, this is, this is really close to home, but it's also uh, far apart because my mom supports me and everything. But it seems like um, the pressure he was under was way more than I, I ever feel. So I had to kind of channel that. But yeah, it, it was... Uh, that's what really resonated with me and the character, uh, the amount of pressure he's under and, and, and what he goes through. Uh, yeah. What drew you to this script? Oh my God, this, this story is so touching and, and important to, to remember. I mean, to make people in Brazil and around the world uh, knowing what's, what happened. I mean, it's a film about memory, so, so and Walter has this very delicate and precise and elegant way to manage a story, so yeah, we're super proud of, of the film. Obviously, it's quite a hard-hitting story. When you met the family, what was that like? Yeah, actually, I, I, I originally met the, the, the author of the book, Marcelo Rubens Paiva. He's a friend, so I, I, I'm a big fan of Marcelo. And, but I never imagined that one day I could play his father, <laughs> and then it was amazing. And he he blasted my he blasted the idea who was 
for for to have me playing this um, missing father, and I did in a very respectful way, and yeah, and then now we're here, and then to see. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm super curious to just to, to, to see the, how the audience here will connect it with the film. What was your most memorable moments of, of filming this of this film? Well, I mean, all the all the experience with the family, the kids, and Fernanda is a great actress, a guy, a very close friend. So we have great moments in this film. I, I like we enjoy a lot doing this film. About Last Swim, tell me about what attracted you to this film. The friends, I just love, I, a celebration of friendship I think I am there for, like no matter what it is. Um, and I read this script and I just thought Sasha and Helen had totally understood the relationships between those characters and just like the vibrancy of that time of life and what like having people that you adore at that time of life gives you and I just thought it was like such a beautiful celebration that they'd captured of that feeling. Yeah. So if, regarding your character, can you tell me more about your character? Yeah, she's Tara, she's feisty, um, she's bold, she doesn't care much about consequences, she's, um, she's a do it first, ask permission later kind of girl and she loves Zeba beyond all things and they're total opposites but the sort of like protectiveness and you know, they give each other what they lack, I think, and it's special and precious. And her relationship with the lads as well is just like, I mean, we never stop laughing even on set. And I think it's probably the same for those characters as well. It's just like daft and free, so free. Yeah. So Sister Midnight, how did it become a, to be where it is today? And how did, what drew you to the script? Um, oh, it was, a, it was a mad script. I couldn't keep it down. And I just thought that, oh my God, this can actually be really cool or it can go terribly wrong <laughs> and I thought how many times does that happen yeah, yeah. and I was like this has to be done and I was also petrified when I came on board because as I said it can be really really, really cool because only if Karan gets what he wants and how he wants it to how he wants to make it otherwise it's very specific it's so specific yeah. um and um and so it was I was terrified but but hopefully it worked, <laughs> worked out well. Hey, you tell us. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you guys have any memorable moments on set? So oh, loads. Uh, we can't really talk about them though because they would spoil something pretty intrinsic. Yeah. But, uh, um, yeah, at the first, I remember the first day though, I remember, first day of film shoot, it was such a small space and I needed my hair to be really messy. Yeah. And Curran's like, control freak, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> So he was like, oh, I'm going to do it. So I was sitting there and Karen was doing my hair. I was like, this is going to be, this is risky. Yeah, so I'm a backstreet hairdresser as well now. So it was, it was like, it was like he was everywhere. Like every character, every actor, every piece of property had, like he knew what it was. It was so specific and great. Being at obviously a film festival for aspiring directors and actors, what advice would you guys give them? Uh, at being at a festival? Like a film festival. Obviously a lot of people who aspire to be a director or an actor or producer come to obviously see you guys or meet people in the industry. What advice would you give them to get into that into that position? Uh, you, you know. I'm not good at like, giving advices. I mean, don't follow people's advice. Do what feels right, I think. Yeah. I mean, that's an advice, but I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, S uh, persistence. Don't follow advice. Don't drink too much at a film festival. <laughs> st stick to your guns. Yeah. That's, that's good. That's good. And what would you like audiences to take away from this film? Uh, I'd like them to be left with the same sort of feeling I get after I've just heard the sort of loud, insane end of a Ramon song. <laughs> By yourself? Um, I think it's a ride and just come for the ride. Um, because these days we watch when we go to watch films, it's like we read the synopsis, we know what the what the length of the film is and what's exactly going to happen, and we, then we go watch it. But I think this film don't do that because otherwise the fun's gone. It's it's really a ride. Come for that. So with this film, what drew you to this story? Well, you know, it's it's a story about a family, uh, a family that had a dream, a dream of a possible a possible future that was broken by a military coup d'etat and 
and it's a story of reinvention because how can you yeah, about a person who had to deal with the five kids a mother had to do with five kids and confronting an authoritarian state and eroding that state at the same time so it was an extraordinary personal story but it was also an extraordinary collective story this film's last swim what drew you to this story and why did you want to make the story alive uh, so I'm born and raised in London and growing up here in the 90s and noughties uh, it became apparent that all of the coming of age stories seemed to be American. There, there were no British coming of age stories, at least none that represented my experience of growing up here. So I always wanted my first film to, to, to be that, you know. Um, and then it it became about also tapping into the energy of, uh, of London on a hot summer's day because I do think the city completely changes and we change the way that we behave. Um, so I, want, I wanted to explore that, yeah. Um, so w when it comes to aspiring directors, what advice would you give them? Oh, wow. Okay, well, um, uh, to stay on course uh, and to find a way to, to keep moving forwards and, uh, and to learn to be patient. Um, and I think you can put all your energy into working on your material um, and make it as, pos as good as it can possibly be so that you just every knockback you use as an opportunity to make the material better until it's impossible for them to say no. But tell me what attracted you to this script? Um, I mean from the moment I read it, it it really kind of struck a chord with me and um, reminded me of things that I'd went through when I was younger and growing up you know coming of age is like what you would say and I feel like it just kind of resonated with me in a certain type of way and it being set in London and me having my childhood and growing up in London it was something that I wanted to do justice and you know be able to tell the story of and also the, the rest of the cast are just fantastic we had such a good time filming this so tell me in a nutshell like your character what tell me more about your character yeah so i play shay price um he's kind of i don't know how to say this uh, in a nice way he's kind of like the less aspiring one of the group basically you know he's quite happy staying in london working in his dad's garage um didn't get great grades in school as you see in the film, but isn't all that bothered about it. I think he's more worried about maybe his friends leaving him and it's that kind of thing. So it was nice having that fun side of him to play with, but also that emotional kind of feelings that you might have about maybe wishing he had done a bit more or had done a bit better in school, which is everyone feels that way at some point, I think. So yeah, it was good fun. So we're at London Film Festival. So for people who are aspiring to be an actor, what advice would you give them? Just keep at it. Like, you know, it's, it's, if you're really passionate about it and it's something that you want to do genuinely and you feel like you have stories to tell and the capacity to tell stories, then keep going. I mean, it's like, it's, you have to be passionate, you have to want it because it's a tough, it's a tough thing to get into. And even once you're in it, you know, you're never guaranteed work. So it's, it's, uh, it's an up and down kind of life. But if you want it, then, then go for it. So um, if you didn't relate to a character, how hard is it to get into that character? I think, I mean, to be honest, if I didn't relate to a character, I probably wouldn't take the job. I think that's quite a big thing for me, is like I always want to try and bring myself into the character's shoes. You know, it's like this, this kind of idea of method acting and removing yourself and becoming someone else completely. I feel it, it works for some people, but for me, I quite like to be able to put my own, um, my own memories, my own experiences into a character just to make it more truthful and, and bring it as close to home as I can, really. So. So you filmed around London, what were your favourite places to film in London and what was your least favourite place to film? Favourite places were, so I live in South London, I'm in Forest Hill. Oh, in Forest Hill, do you, do you ever go to the Bird and Hat? Bird and Hat, what the pub? In, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 play a game of pool in there. Have you? So I, years, I'm completely going off topic, but like during lockdown, I, because there was literally no work, I got like a two month job in there, doing their socials. Well, I might have seen you in there. Me and my, me and my, me and my mate, we used to go in there trying to beat all the geezers at Paul and piss them off. It was good fun. So I did their socials for a little bit. Oh, amazing. Well, I probably saw you in there, but that's yeah. fun. No, it's a good, it's a nice place to be. Forest Hill was great, and we st we shot some of the film in Beckenham Place Park, which is a lovely like country park, and um, I enjoyed that part of filming just because I didn't have to get up and travel to North London every day. So when we were filming there, it was like a 15 minute drive, which was no. Nice. But it was, it was amazing shooting in all the locations. Primrose Hill, we did some stuff shooting through the middle of central London, which is like kind of guerrilla filming, filmmaking, where like small camera kind of following us along and like general members of the public being in shot. 
and had the ADs running around trying to get them to sign release forms and stuff. It was intense, but it was it was a challenge, but it was it was amazing to do that kind of. Um, when it comes to highs and lows, do you have any highs or lows of filming? Of filming for this job, yeah. mainly highs. If I'm honest, any lows it would be is just we were having too much fun and we tied ourselves out. It was it was honestly just the most one of the most joyous jobs I've had a part of doing and all the cast got on so well we really became like best friends for the duration of filming are you excited to be at london film festival very glad i mean i love london i think it's the best city in the world really i come here and said this is a city and i mean it's an honor to be in the london film festival so what drew you to this script sorry what drew you to the script what attracted you to this script everything first the book i read the book before being invited to play Yonisi. And I always wanted to know what happened to Marcelo's father, because that was a very well-known story in Brazil. We knew Marcelo is very famous because he's a very famous writer, but I never knew the details and suddenly it's better than I thought. And then I was invited to play Eunice and that was another level to try to reach this amazing woman. How does it feel to be at London F Film Festival? It means a lot because it's, um, as I said just before, it's a very important festival, um, very famous with amazing, amazing movies, with incredible cinemas like mythic cinemas, and we don't have distributors here in Engl in England. I know it's hard for a st stranger movie to get uh, distributors here, so maybe it's the only time. Uh, people can see it on the cinema, so it's so important for me. Uh, and I'm so happy that the BFI chose us to, 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 to show the movie in this section. So about your film, how did it all come about? How did you get it started? It started when it was right after the Me Too movement and uh, Portrait of a Lady on Fire. And I just, I just started to realize that the vision I had of myself, of the society, I just realized the, the impact of this patriarchal society in our lives. And we, I, I, I went to my best friend, Senda Kodrani's house, to live just with girls for the first time in my life. I escaped from my couple and everything. I was suffocating in a way. So, and we started to have a really strong sensation, like there were no gays. It was during the, the COVID uh, quarantine. So no gays of uh, a man in a couple or men in the street or the society on us because no work, just, just us. And the bodies, just our bodies were letting go. We didn't be careful of anything, just we were breathing and laughing and also talking about really important things that happened to us, uh, trauma, uh, trauma, um, traumatizing uh, things that happened to me or to them. And, and we talked about it a lot and with humor. And I was this sensation that I need in my life, I want to share it. And, uh, and that's how I start to, to write this movie. And since I love cinema, I really wanted to make a film that makes people laugh, that makes people let go, enjoy, have fun, even if it's a hard thing. But we are so used to, like as women, there is so many women who have these horrible stories, but they continue to move on with humor, like, and so, yeah, for me, it's, this movie is also a freedom in the, in the form, like in the cinematic, cinematic form, like I wanted to explore everything to break the rules, uh, to, yeah, to, to enjoy uh, the cinematic way, I'm sorry for my English, but also the, the heart of the sense of the movie. When it comes to this film, what drew you to want to work on this film? Um, I think, well, a lot of it was because of Sasha. He told such a beautiful, incredible story. Um, I think it's a really special coming of age. I think the lens that he's put it through is really important. Um, and I just really, I loved the writing. Um, and then Nisha, who is one of our producers, she was so passionate about it. And I knew 
us all as a team it could be something really beautiful. So if you could put this film in a nutshell, well, how would you describe this film for people that want to go come and see this film? I think maybe um, an exploration of what it's like to be a teenager, to have a lot on your shoulders, I mean a lot, <laughs> um, and to try and find the positives out of that. And I think that every teenager should come and see it, and their parents. So tell me about this script, what attracted you to this script? Oh, it was just such a beautifully written story, and the fact that Helen and Sasha were able to encapsulate how, not just how young people today speak, but the emotions that we all have within us. I think that was really nice. Just the way that they were able to show who we are. So could you, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off then. Um, if you can explain, how would you explain your character to people who want to see this film? Uh, she's a confused young girl that has got a lot of figuring out to do. She lacks perspective. And I think throughout this day, throughout this film, she gains so much different lenses of perspective and yeah. As an actor, do you ever, if you don't relate to a character, do you find it hard to have to act that character? Are we so real? This is my second gig, and um, I feel like both the things that I've done so far have been in a realm where, like, they either could be me or they could be a friend. Do you know what I mean? So I feel like I haven't had to really push the boat out too much in terms of like exploration of character but no I think that's what I want to do like I don't want I don't want to be me all the time I want to be someone else <laughs> um, so if you for aspiring actors what advice would you give them ooh read and watch films yeah 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 watch as many films as you can read as much as you can I think that's like I'm, I suck at advice <laughs> I'll be so honest. Well, I was gonna, so my next question was actually, how did you learn lines? Like, how, is it easy for you to pick up lines? Okay, so I would like go sit on a hill in my favorite park and read the script over and over and over again. And then like a week before shooting, I was like, right, this hasn't stuck. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> um, and then I realized that they give you sides every morning. So they give you just like what you're doing on the day every morning. And having, having that, compared to the big script, like the big chunk of it all, and just having something small to focus on every morning, that's how I got it. Like I knew the character, I understood the character beforehand, but the words genuinely, for real, came to me like on the day, <laughs> by like blitzing through the, the sides, yeah. Um, so you filmed in London a lot, where was your favorite place to film, and where was your least favorite place to film? Ooh, favorite place to film, South London, because that it took me like five minutes to get home. <laughs> Least favorite place to film, um, North London, because it took me forever to get home. <laughs>